Today, uh, we are joined by Mark White, who is co-founder and president at Content26. Um, Content26 is a Seattle-based agency uh, specializing in Amazon marketing services and content creation. Mark has been working at this for more than a decade. Um, I've personally worked with Mark for many, many years and uh, certainly see him as an expert in, in, in that particular space and look forward to hearing from him. Jessica is co-founder and president of Gen.Video. Uh, who is a pioneer in social commerce uh, with 15 years of experience spanning television, digital media, influencer marketing, and e-commerce. She will share a little bit more about who Gen.Video is, but similarly, I've been working with that team uh, for many years and, again, can speak to their expertise in the space of how to take video and put it to work in the e-commerce space. And with that, I hand it over to Mark for our first segment. Great, Danny, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to work with you and, and be part of your webinars. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit, we're talking about AMS, but I'm gonna be focusing on, at the early stage of this talk, on the content side of AMS. Uh, we're a little different in, in, in with, with respect to most AMS providers, is that we put a heavy lift on content to drive a lot of organic traffic to support the AMS efforts. And Danny, at the end of this slide, will talk a little bit more of the particulars of AMS, and during the Q&A, I can get into some technical details about Amazon marketing services and paid advertising. Um, as a background, as Danny mentioned, we've been in this space for a uh, quite a long time. Uh, since 2004, we've been working with on the Amazon platform. We call what we do dynamic content experiences, running paid search campaigns to drive traffic to the product detail page, and then using that data that drives traffic to iterate on that page, to revise the page in order to get those great keywords in there, then they can drive discoverable traffic organically and save on the AMS side. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we help Amazon, we help our clients with AMS and content. And, you know, many of our clients are, you know, you're kind of your typical Fortune 50, Fortune 100 brands. But we work, we're starting to work now that with AMS with an awful lot of startups and companies in the, you know, 20 to $50 million revenue range that are really building out a new portfolio of products and using the Amazon platform to launch those products and launch their marketing campaigns. So this slide comes from Amazon and this is where it all starts. And the reason I really wanna focus on this as opposed to advertising per se is that AMS, Amazon Marketing Services, become a ni nice, bright, shiny object in everybody's CMO tool toolkit. Um, Amazon is exceeding all expectations in terms of their AMS growth. You know, I've seen numbers uh, ranging from eight to twelve billion dollars in in advertising revenue that Amazon is going to drive over the next three to five years, and I think they're actually ahead of that curve. I think they're going to be moving into this into the double digits of revenue and the billions of revenue in the next few years. Um, and the reason for that is fundamentally Amazon. The Amazon URL is your most important URL for the vast majority of your products. It's got to get the most traffic. It's going to have the most impact for both online and offline sales. It's one of the first touch points. Social media is going to be one of the first touch points, but Amazon product page is going to be one of the first touch points that consumers have with your brand, your messaging, and your product. The reason for that is more than 50% of all uh, search product search starts on Amazon. That's far ahead of Google and Bing combined. So when, Am when the customer first sees your page, you have to present them with your best kind of your best <laughs> um, presentation, and what we and Amazon calls you know PDP readiness or Amazon retail readiness, and what it really means is getting that entire product page ready before you start driving traffic to it. That includes really good content, and, I, and I'm going to mention something here that I'm not going to talk about in the rest of my talk, but the the user reviews, the customer reviews are very very important. If you're just launching on Amazon or if you're launching a new product, you don't want to spend dollar driving traffic until you get some user reviews. The more user reviews, the better it is for conversion, the better it is for your kind of organic SEO on Amazon. And you can do that through the Vine program and other ways. But 
good titles, good bullets, good product description, good A+, good images, good video, and, and above and beyond all that, some user reviews to really help um, drive that retail ready page. So this is what I'm gonna focus on, how to get that page ready for your traffic. What we call SEO, SEO content or essential content is the content that's above the fold. In this case, it's the titles, and you can see about the product, the bullets, the hero image, that has got to be stable. You've got to have a really good foundation of content for that before you do anything else. And the title is very important for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, it's going to be the thing that everybody sees on the on the, SC, the search result page. It's going to be what they're looking at first. But also, the title is going to give you the most uh, organic juice when, in terms of or, uh, keywords. So this is where you want to put those three or four important keywords in the title for discoverability. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means uh, little down the on the road and also the bullets the, the five six product bullets that Amazon allows you to have you want some keywords in that so your titles you want your titles to be keyword optimized you want to uh, follow department style guides our production team we're producing you know you know tens of thousands of these um, you know kind of on a monthly basis and when you're not when you're out of compliance with Amazon, we're seeing an awful lot of content being pushed back to us for for uh, um, for correction. We're not when when brands push content outside of compliance, Amazon is pushing back in a lot of ways now, and they will continue to do so because they want a really good customer experience. So, following the Amazon style, guys, getting those keywords into the into the content, especially the title, is very important. And then down to the bullets, of course, the same thing, short, concise. And then in the end of the day, you're above the fold, has to answer a really quick question. What is this product? What does it do? And how can it help me? And those three, if, the, if you can answer those three questions for your customer, you're well on the way to conversion. And you're well on the way to then being able to drive traffic in here and get a good ROI or what they say, uh, uh, how they call it on Amazon ROAS, return on ad spend. And again, images is obviously very, very, very important. Um, I won't get into too, that too much, but again, this is just part of your um, PDP readiness, the product detail page readiness uh, practice you need. And Jessica's gonna talk about video. Video is extremely important, especially particular types of video that can, again, answer that those questions. What is this product? What is, how does it work and how will it help me? Um, a plus content is below the fold. I'm not going to spend any, very much time talking about this. Um, the numbers in terms of traffic on A plus page is fairly low. I mean, somewhere maybe 15% of all customers that come to the product page actually go through the A plus content, but the conversion rate is much higher. So the people that do, the customers that do use the A plus content for their research, they tend to be you know further down the funnel for buying, and they will convert at a higher rate. And also, if I, if you go, we go back to my original statement that Amazon being the most important URL, the most visible URL on your product, this is where you can really extend your brand messaging. Amazon is giving you know these power pages, they're you know five hundred thousand dollar pages to do all kinds of things for you in terms of video, in terms of slideshows. Really get a great immersive co customer experience. It's an important part of the page for your most important brand uh, products and also for your for your branding. So that covers the PDP part of the of the my presentation, getting that product detail page ready and optimized so they can start driving traffic. And we work with our brands on Amazon Marketing Service, AMS. If you're not familiar with AMS, it's basically Google AdWords for the Amazon platform. So when somebody comes on online, they search for, you know, nutritional drink. In this case, Buy. Buy was a startup that came to us many, uh, three or four years ago with only about 50 SKUs. They end up selling to uh, the um, Snapple group for about $1.7 billion after a few years. And their primary strategy was an Amazon-centric strategy. They came on board. They pushed really, really hard on content. They pushed hard on AMS. They won category and market share with Within their within their category at Amazon, and they didn't have very, a big distribution agreement with supermarkets, brick and mortar. 
But Snapple brought them, bought them up because of the, the high market visibility they brought to the table through, really through a really smart content and AMS play. So AMS is that tops that sponsored, those sponsored ads you see when somebody comes online and searches for a nutrition drink or coconut drink or whatever keywords buy is optimizing, ideally buy would win, you would win that buy, that box up there. And that's the most, you know, the most valuable real estate on that search engine result page, that Amazon SERP. And that's what AMS does is takes those keywords, delivers your ads in very, in a, in the, the important real estate part of the search result page and drive traffic. That's how you click through and you drive traffic and you're paying for those clicks. Now, right now, Amazon is still below market rate in terms of Google relative to Google, but as more and more brands come on board to AMS, as Amazon's AMS revenue drives from two billion a year to four to eight to 12, you're gonna see that gap between what it costs for a click on Amazon and what it costs for a click on Google really to narrow. What that means is you've got to have a strategy and this is very, very important. And this is where kind of thinking about AMS as a bright, shiny object and just throwing a bunch of money at it right now. It's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel in some degree. You're gonna you're gonna get a good return. But as more and more your competition comes on and, you're, and they're bidding for your branded keywords, you're bidding for your category keywords, you've got to have a strategy that can drive organic traffic. You can't solely rely on AMS or any paid advertising strategy to drive traffic. And I just want to share one SEO hack that we, that we have. We call this dynamic content, but you can do this kind of on a one-off basis. So the first thing you do is you get your page PDP ready, as I said, product detail page already with the, the, t the title, the bullets, the content. You have some keyword tools. One click has a great keyword tool. There's other keyword tools out there that you can put into your content at the, as part of the new item setup as part of that initial phase of your content development. And you publish to Amazon, maybe you publish into a PIM, like a syndication platform like Salsify or something. And so your page is ready to go. You run some AMS campaigns on your page, and you're going to start with, you know, probably a thousand keywords or so. Um, and you're going to use short tail and long tail. What I mean by short tail, let's take the example of a sign company, a B2B sign company. They sell signs to other businesses. So a short tail, obviously a short tail term is signs. You've got to have sign, the, the word signs in the title and the bullets and the short description, or you're not going to get anywhere. But maybe, maybe there's a subcomponent called safety signs. So some of you are it's starting to get a little longer in that tail. So, so, so you're gonna wanna put safety signs in some of them. So as you're running the AMS campaigns and you're, and you're putting all of these iterations of keywords into your campaigns, over the next four, six, eight weeks, you start seeing that those thousand words are gonna really kind of focus on maybe four, five, 10, a dozen, somewhere around there that's driving 80% of your traffic. So you're gonna take those keywords and put them back into your content and, and, and keep running the campaigns and iterate on that content. So now you've got keywords that are driving traffic on your page based on your AMS um, data that are now sitting there or waiting for organic traffic and can start getting some leverage, what we call SEO juice. And as you're doing this, you're gonna start looking at your 500 SKUs of signs, and maybe some of them are gonna say safety signs made of plastic, safety signs that are OSHA compliant. You get more and more long tail with your signs, so over time, you'll be able to really fine tune your organic, you know, your organic keywords and your traffic based on your AMS data. So you put, the, put it back into the product page, you analyze the keyword performance using like something like the Clavis dashboard. And I'm really excited, uh, Danny, about the traffic, traffic conversion and sales beta you guys are doing, because that's really the holy grail is to understand how all this affects not just your sales and through Vendor Central, but sales everywhere, your conversion, all that stuff is very important. And then you revise and publish the content and you syndicate to other retailers. And this last step, syndicating to other retailers is interesting because you're using Amazon data, the most visited retail site in the world to then publish into your other retailers. And it's not always gonna be apples to apples, but consumers are gonna, are gonna be searching very similarly on Walmart, on Target, and on some of your other 
uh, retailers and you're using that Amazon Insight, Amazon data to drive traffic there as well. So it's just one hack that I think that can be very useful um, with AMS and with content um, to move, the, move the, uh, your traffic forward. And that's the end of my presentation and um, I'll ha hand it back over to Dan. Jessica, there? Yes, all right. Fantastic, Thank take you. it away. Perfect, all right. Thanks, Mark, that was great. And thank you to Danny and Paul for having us. Um, hold on. Backwards. So, you know, we're very excited to be participating in this webinar to help brands think about how to leverage the insights and data from platforms like OCR and Clavis, Gen Video is an influencer marketing platform that leverages both technology and services to help brands gain market share by providing three things, content, social distribution, and enrichment of retail product pages. We do this across all verticals, um, vendors and sellers on Amazon, and can reach different audiences. Really what we like to focus on and where we think there's a lot of synergy between the work that's done with you know, folks at Content26, Clavis, one-click retailers, thinking about how can we help brands work within their organization and connect the dots a bit around what might be happening in social media with influencer marketing, knowing that this content has tremendous value if you can bring it to customers within the retail ecosystem. And so a little bit of background on our company. We've been around and working with Amazon and other retailers uh, for over eight years now thinking about what the appropriate content formats are when you're thinking about so bringing social media content from influencers into the retail environment. We've worked directly with folks at Amazon that run the community team, the team that runs the Vine program and ratings and reviews to think about how do you appropriately present this type of content to shoppers so that they understand that it's additional content complementary to the organic content that is contributed within the community that already exists on Amazon. We also work really closely with Amazon's creative services team to think about how can this content be leveraged to enrich product pages and make sure that they're retail ready as I think you know, both Danny and, and Mark mentioned before, uh, but then also think about how can this content be leveraged in media as well to help drive traffic and bring a, an audience that's kind of already a little bit further down the, the funnel into the ecosystem so that you can get them to consider buying your product. And so before I jump into some of the more tactical uh, things on how to leverage content within Amazon, I think, you know, understanding that there's a variety of people on uh, attending the webinar that maybe span e-commerce, more general marketing roles. You know, one of the, the big takeaways from some joint research we did with the shopper marketing agency, Geometry Global, last year was that video content is more influential on making purchases than other types of content. It's not to say that you should forgo images or text. It's shoppers are starting to look for video within their consumer journey online, whether that's directly on the retailer, Amazon, any of the other retailers, or going to other platforms to get this information, watch this content before they buy. And so you think about that, you know, one of the the first questions you, you want to understand before you decide to invest in video production is, well, why? Uh, and, and the reason is, is, you know, for some of the folks um, who are creating video content, this may seem obvious, uh, but maybe not for, for folks that are focusing on imagery and text at the moment to, you know, get the basics right for retail readiness, you know, believe Believability is something that is really better conveyed through video. You can see the person. You can appreciate the environment that's around them. Um, it's sometimes, you know, you could say the next best thing to being able to touch and feel the product if you were doing shopping in a store. 
it's more relevant than any types of content and many other types of content, again, because you can see it in action in a real-world setting. And the other thing that's kind of happening simultaneously and, and in its own path is that social media is becoming the main source of inspiration for, for consumers in terms of what they want to buy. And that can happen more casual, you know, lean back experience if you think about someone who may be on Instagram or Pinterest and just casually scrolling and may see something they're interested in that they didn't, they weren't necessarily looking to buy. But then there's also the behavior that's becoming more prevalent, which is shoppers going to YouTube, Instagram, their favorite blog uh, to look for the next product that they need whether it's a skin cream or a laptop, and really taking uh, the self-selected influencers or social media experts that they've decided to follow as authorities in any specific category. And so this presents an interesting opportunity for brands who have probably already invested in social media or have dipped their toe in spending uh, in partnership with influencers to think about how does that influencer marketing activity translate to some mid or lower funnel activity. And again, you know, when budget budgeting, sometimes video production is seen as more expensive, nice to have, not a need to have if if there's the concept of potentially repurposing a TV copy or something else that was created for a totally different use case and putting it on the retail page. What we're seeing and what the data is starting to tell us is that uh, consumers are actually looking for social media content as part of their discovery process and buying process. Um, and it's most effective at driving sales. For the first time ever, social media has jumped ahead of both friends and family in being the most trusted source for product information. And that's in front of brands and retailers as well. And so again, wanted to ground the conversation a little bit because what I want to focus more on now is based on that, based on the understanding that consumers are seeking out this type of content, whether on a retailer or not, um, and brands are investing in it. And starting to invest more in influencer as a means of driving brand awareness and, and getting scale from a, a social perspective, um, how do you do more with that content? How do you extract more value and become more efficient so that you can leverage it in other ways and not just Amazon? And so this video content has a purpose and when thought about collaboratively can really start to have some impact on market share and the brand's bottom line. And so on Amazon specifically, there are a number of different placements for video content. I'm going to start by first talking about the image block. And so having a great title, having images at the, above the fold is incredibly important. There are opportunities to put video content here as well. And what we're seeing is that 90% of first-time visit visitors are looking at all rich media in the image block. And so thinking about how to include video in that experience becomes really important when you start to look at some of the other metrics that we're seeing, which is around the sales impact of having video on the page. Customers are 17% more likely to purchase after watching a video. And at this point, I'm sharing just base, um, general video statistics, not influencer specifically. But you can see that the, by presenting video into that experience, you can drive conversion. And, and you know, the, the Clavis platform can help identify product pages that maybe are lacking in video. OCR and some of the analytics that are there available in Amazon Retail Analytics can help you see that what happens after enriching a page with video, and I'll share a few case studies about that in a second. Um, but pages covered with influencer video are seeing on average a 30% increase in conversion rate. And so as you think about different sources for creating video content, if your organization is investing in influencer, a little bit more collaboration between your, your e-commerce or retail or shopper marketing teams with the, 
the teams that are working on influencer content, you can really start to think about how do you bring that content in. And what I say is, you know, how we think about guiding our, our clients through that is you really can't take a 10-minute closet organization video that, um, you know, an influencer might put on their YouTube channel. Her audience likes to know what she does in the morning before she gets to the, the task at hand, but really when you think about what's relevant to a customer on a platform like Amazon, it's really the information about the product benefits. It goes back to what Mark said earlier. Um, wh what is the product? What does it do? And how does it help me? Those same questions need to be answered in any piece of video content. And when doing so, you're really you're, you're providing that full experience and, and filling out all of the content on the page. So for those that prefer, prefer scanning the page and reading the text and the, the bullets, that's there. But for the customer um, who it prefers watching video content, seeing the product in action, it is really important that that story arc of the video mimics some of the information that would be placed in the basic and enhanced content on the product page. And so, one thing to note right now, video titles and descriptions we don't believe are playing into any of the impact from a search ranking standpoint standpoint for Amazon. We do know that video is starting to show up in search and we we recommend to brands when they're putting video content in to be mindful of that metadata when syndicating the content into the retail channel, whether it's through seller or vendor central or through some programming relationship with related video shorts with the expectation that over time that content um, may start to show up and search more and the metadata around it will, will have a, an impact into some of that. And so here's a quick case study, um, a laundry brand that we, we've worked with for a number of years, uh, created content that was placed on social, optimized those videos, made, took shorter pieces of content, placed them on the product pages, um, and we con did a control study where we only optimized half of the brand's product portfolio pages with the influencer content in the image block and left the other half of the pages as is. Um, and really what we found was that we saw a little over a 4x increase in conversion rate with the presence of video. And so right now Amazon doesn't share viewership data uh, with anyone, Gen Video as a programming an approved creative services vendor, the brand direct. And so really what we can look at is the presence of video and then sales conversion trends. You understand the impact of adding this content to the page. Another, another example just to kind of further prove out uh, how you can think about setting up a framework for measurement when introducing video and influencer video content to your pages. Uh, a grocery client of ours, we did a year-over-year -year study looking at content. This is a little dated, uh, but it was more of a longitudinal, longitudinal look across multiple products where, again, you can see um, the impact in terms of conversion rate lift for pages that were enriched with video versus pages that weren't. And so this is really, a, I don't want to say easy, I don't want to oversimplify the, the work that goes into creating amazing content with influencers, but assuming that that behavior is already happen, happening and those relationships and programs are occurring within your organization, bringing that content into retail has some significant benefits and you can clearly see that shoppers within the Amazon platform are, are doing more, spending more, buying more frequently when this content is made available. And so from here I'm going to spend a couple minutes talking about the type of video that really resonates on this platform and why. Some of the reasons Amazon shoppers specifically are looking for video content is because they want to compare two products and 
video allows for that platform and influencers are really great at being able to compare a new product that a brand may ask the influencer to use for a couple weeks and then create content around versus the typical product that they use. And so if you think about, you know, this is a, a secret deodorant. If you were to provide beauty and lifestyle influencers with a new aluminum-free product, you could ask them to talk about the other aluminum-free products that they've used in the past or have them talk about what it's like to transition from their current product to something that is different. This allows you to create a library of content that can like, get added to your retail pages and speak to different audience segments. And so while the related video short strip is below the fold on the product pages, there's more real estate for you to push content into. And currently, this content can serve multiple purposes. You can bring re straight review content into the related video strips. And we like to think about that content really providing the shopper with select selection choice the same way you may think about splitting your media into different audience segments. And so maybe secret deodorant is not the right example, but let's use a, an Acer laptop. Part of, the buying, part of the overall audience, there may be a buying segment for hardcore gamers, but there might be another segment for people that are off to college. And so by leveraging influencers, you can create multiple pieces of content that you can place within related video shorts and allow the shopper to have a bit of choice and to find that piece of content that relates most to them either just by, hey, this person looks like me, they're my age, um, you know, or you know, just relatable. Uh, and then from there, there's, there's space to provide other information. What does it do? How does it work? And so how-to videos and videos that really drill into a specific feature, benefit, or trial barrier is a key use case for this content because video is the closest thing to touching and feeling a product. And so for anything that you find to be um, hard to understand uh, without showing it, this is where you can really take advantage of this new real estate that Amazon makes available. And influencers typically can cover off on all of three of these types of content in one engagement as long as you know all of the use cases and all of the communication um, challenges that you are trying to address with this type of content. And so there's two things you can do to help increase your sales on Amazon. You can optimize the page to drive conversion rate up, and you can drive more traffic into the ecosystem. And so, you know, influencers by definition have audiences, and that's why brands are spending money to push their content out to them. And so, you know, you can consider that organic, you earned media, however you want to classify it. At the end of the day, if you're not thinking about what happens next, after that influencer's audience watches the video, you're missing out on the ability to tap into that highly engaged audience to drive traffic back into your channel. And what we're seeing in the data is that there's direct correlation to when a video is published to YouTube, uh, traffic lifts on Amazon, which you know, I think is probably pretty obvious would happen, but then also you can see conversion trend when that traffic is driven in. And so you really want to start to think about how do you leverage your influencers to create amazing content that does two things, drive traffic back into the retail ecosystem, and then by placing that content on the product page, you're increasing the conversion rate as well. And so, just like you may think about putting media through AMS to drive more traffic to your product pages, you can get a bit more scale with the influencer activity that you're doing by putting paid support against that influencer content. And so understanding consumers are looking for information from social media influencers and that that content um, 
can be driving traffic into the retailer and ecosystem. We are starting to see brands invest and test leveraging influencer as creative. And the Amazon Media Group has a number of media offerings that are video enabled where you can drive traffic um, either on site or through their programmatic network back to the product pages. Another way to think about how else can I within my organization get more value from the influencer content that I'm creating is by thinking through what role it can play and merchandising events that may be happening. Father's Day, uh, off to college, holiday. Amazon has a lot of merchandising opportunities for the retail teams or for your retail teams, I should say. Um, and quite often we're seeing that they are very receptive to influencer content for two reasons. One, they know and they're seeing significant increases in traffic from social media influencers to Amazon. And two, they're, they're seeing that shoppers that are watching this content are converting at much higher rates. Uh, and so all to say that when you're thinking about bringing influencer content into the retail environment, um, of course I would start with product pages, but there are lots of other ways to think about leveraging the content, whether that's within merchandising landing pages or through any of the templated or customizable landing pages that are opened up as an advertiser with various you know, minimum spend levels. And so we've seen some really amazing results in partnership with brands that are taking the content one step further beyond placing it on the product pages and leveraging it on AMS landing pages and even working in partnership with AMS on custom experiences where you can showcase multiple products and provide that um, influence or content right at the product level to really help drive that conversion and get someone to add to cart and buy. And so with that, I'm going to hand it back to Danny. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, to both of you. Those were uh, really insightful sections. And in just a moment, we're going to tee up some Q&A. Uh, there is a box at the bottom right of your screen where you can enter your Q&A, and Paul will be uh, putting those into queue for just after I finish uh, this next portion. What I wanted to do is briefly provide an overview of how one-click retail and Clavis Insight measure this space. Um, um, first and foremost, if you are testing different tactics for promotion and marketing and want to know what works, sales, of course, which is available in Amazon, is, is the, always the first place to start. Uh, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong. A product can go out of stock. A third party can take the buy box. Um, different things that uh, if you're an Amazon practitioner you know can happen where sales doesn't always tell the full story. So having traffic is a great way to understand. Uh, let's say the new item that you're driving traffic to, uh, the sales may not register spike just yet, but there sure is the traffic and eyeballs going that gives you a good way to measure the impact of your various uh, AMS, AMG, and video tactics. Uh, excellent. Um, and similarly, a conversion is another metric which we also provide through one-click retail um, to understand whether or not that detail page is converting, particularly when you start to add things like video and other rich content. Um, you won't see that, that shift necessarily in sales all the time as quickly, and the traffic wouldn't reflect what's happening on the page. But when you have a conversion metric, you can start to look at the other actions that you've taken on the page to improve it and how that connects to your conversion. Um, and then finally, there's a number of solutions within Clavis as well. Uh, both traffic and sales from OCR are now available in the Clavis platform through our product actions as well as our report builder solution. So you can take a look at those highly trafficked pages that you're driving traffic to uh, with media or else uh, focusing on with your rich content and making sure that the rest of your page attributes are as they should be. You're in stock, you have the right number of ratings, reviews, and so on. We can check for the presence of video and even better yet, create a list of pages that are missing video, uh, so you can focus on those to add them as well as a number of other fields that you would want to have complete. And then finally this September we are excited to be launching a paid search capability where for the first time uh, Clavis users will have a full view as the shopper has 
of the search results page inclusive of not just organic, but also those sponsored listings as well. And within the search results, you'll start to see uh, call out if it's, a, if it's a paid or sponsored ad. And that's a new feature that's coming in September. Um, it is something that if you are a Clavis user on the line and want to learn more about, reach out to your account team, either your customer success consultant or your sales rep. And with that, um, I'm going to hand this back over to Paul to, to, to facilitate our Q&A. And thank you, everybody, for listening in. Great. Thank you, Danny. And uh, thank you, Mark and uh, Jessica, all uh, for, your, for your wonderful insights. Um, this first one, we'll, uh, we'll kick off over to Jessica. Uh, are there any categories or verticals that are doing uh, influencer video uh, on retail really well? You know, I think as long as your product is for sale online, on Amazon specifically, there's a, an ability to leverage influencer marketing to accelerate your, your business. But I'd say the two categories that have really leaned in most right now are consumer packaged goods and consumer electronics. And so the first I think is a little bit more around following the, where the, the money is from an advertiser spend. And so, you know, the likes of P&G, Kimberly Clark, Unilever, some of the world, uh, they spend a, a lot of money in advertising. And what we're seeing is that some of that money, you know, first there was the shift from traditional to digital media. Now we're seeing more and more um, reallocation of digital spend to influencer marketing because they're seeing such great results. Um, as a result, I think that has really opened things up for, for influencer marketing. And that category uh, plays into trends that you're seeing in social media nicely. Mom bloggers, um, lifestyle influencers, beauty and fashion influencers, all of that um, content and entertainment content that's happening on social marries nicely with where advertisers are, are spending money. And so consumer packaged goods, I think, is a, an early mover in that, that space. Um, the other one, consumer electronics, higher ticket items, but still, uh, the, the ecosystem within the YouTube environment specifically around technology, um, and I even go from you know, straight consumer electronics to uh, video games and gaming, has just been such a, a movement and that content is super high quality, 4K. So, you know, and the personal the people behind that the content have great personalities and so they've been really able to amass credibility and a following that makes it easy for, for brands who want to align themselves with um, and that content is amazing and so you know you start to forget that it's influencer content and it looks like something that could be produced by, you know, a CNET or a digital trends and so um, I think those two categories are really pushing the envelope on how to tap into the power of the influencer and really think about, you know, when collaborating with them, how, how do I get more from a, an omni-channel standpoint versus just thinking about it, you know, from a PR perspective. Great. Thanks, Jess. Um, and yeah, a common question I'm seeing is concerning the PowerPoint uh, and recording. Yes, they will be available. Uh, be on the lookout for uh, both uh, probably within two days uh, after this webinar. Uh, Mark, this question is for you. Uh, you had mentioned that um, you know traffic on um, you know pages with A plus content w was somewhat low, but the conversion rates were were high. Um, you know what products do you think um, would benefit from from A plus content, whether it be product types or, or product life cycles? So the way we think about it is that always the 80-20 rule, you know, what 20% of your products are driving 80% of your revenue. And that's all every brand have, has those list of products. So these are your key products that are going to be leading a lot of your um, advertising marketing campaigns. You absolutely want A-plus content on those products. Another A-plus content category, um, I, we think, are those startup products that are going to really, as you're pivoting as a brand or if you're a startup 
company, you're trying to bring out products to the marketplace like Buy. Now, Buy was a very, very interesting uh, uh, situation because, I mean, I don't want to belittle it, but it's just flavored water. They had 50 SKUs. They had no distribution uh, strategy to speak of in brick and mortar. And they fundamentally use A-plus content and AMS to play that shadow puppet game up here really big. And, you know, 50 SKUs and a, and a $1.7 billion buyout, who wouldn't take that? And it was really premised on really smart use of A-plus. So that's a really good startup example of a brand company coming in and really bringing a brand new disruptive product to the market using A plus content and a few other things and AMS. So two things, the startup products that you bring, disruptive products you're bringing to the market and the 80-20 rule, the most important uh, products in your portfolio. And then you use your budget wisely to spread across the rest. Great. And um, we'll stick with you for, for this one. Um, for brands that have a very similar um, products, uh, you know, how should you think about the, uh, the, the key word overlap strategy? So I was afraid you're going to give that to me. And um, that's a very tactical and technical question yeah. I'd have to defer on. So um, if anybody wants to, if the questioner wants to write me directly at my email address, I will get our, our, our expert on, on our side to give a very detailed response to that. So I don't even want to pretend that I could answer that question um, in any kind of technical fashion. Sure, no problem at all. Sorry about that. Uh, no, that's okay. Um, and this one we'll um, we'll we'll toss over to to Danny. Um, you know, certainly we talked about um, you know traffic and and sales and conversions being some measures, but you know, what are some of the best ways to really determine whether a page would actually benefit from you know basic search you know search optimization versus you know paid tactics to drive some some gold there. Yeah, it, you know, there's a few different things to look at. First and foremost is the page on its own already organically performing well. Um, often a product may be a long tail product, something that's suddenly hard to find in brick and mortar, and you may find that sales are spiking. It may be a priority product from an internal perspective, either it's a new launch or perhaps a cash cow type of item where, um, you know, guidance to the organization is to really focus and prioritize, and those are the kinds of items you want to optimize as well. Um, and then sometimes it's about tying in with your local with your marketing to understand where they're going to be spending their digital uh, and offline dollars, both in store and in, and, in, uh, and in media, and make sure that you're tying in and having those products well represented um, on Amazon as well, which is uh, far more likely to be the source of research if a consumer decides they want to go and find out more versus, uh, you know, a traditional Google search. So I, I think those are a number of different um, areas. And, and then, it, you know, absolutely looking at those traffic numbers sometimes can be a surprise where you may have a low dollars but high traffic page, particularly where there's been a lost buy box for a period of time or if a third-party seller has executed some tactics um, to suppress basically the manufacturer's version of the listing and, and bring theirs to the top. So those can also be a good way to understand what's happening and how to prioritize your resources. Great. And uh, final question. Um, and I'll actually give this to each one of you, but for pertinent to your kind of the areas that you covered in today's presentation. So the, the holidays are coming up, certainly Black Friday, you know, the Thanksgiving in the U.S. and, and the holiday shopping season. So what should brands be thinking about now to prepare themselves from, you know, for successful holiday seasons, whether it's, you know, their digital presence, their potential paid advertising tactics, and all the way down to the, the video influencer tactics. We'll, um, we'll kick off with Mark. Thanks. Well, first of all, any kind of content creation, A-plus creation, getting that PDP uh, retail ready, it can be a six to eight week process if you have a pretty high inventory. So you've got to start now in terms of budgeting and planning and workflow to get that content done for Black Friday. And the same thing holds true for AMS. We're now in discussions with our largest clients on fourth quarter spend because fourth quarter is going to be the biggest spend. That's where everybody's, a lot of the budget allocation, the budget pacing is allocating the majority the, of the of the um, of the budget for fourth quarter, and but you've got to get enough juice out there to work. You can't just simply launch an AMS campaign on Wednesday before Black Friday. You got to get those four six weeks of of really baking those SEO the AMS campaigns going. So thinking about budget and putting budget together now and a plan in action starting in uh, mid September for that Black Friday holiday is very very important. Perfect. 
uh, Jeff? Yeah, I will bi build on that. I think it was great to hear you talk about the, the timing. And one thing that sometimes gets overlooked is the amount of time it takes to create thoughtful, quality video content, optimize it for the retail pages, and then enrich those pages so they are ready, um, ready to go and have seasoned in a little bit, to your point, before you start putting meaningful traffic, whether that's you know, other paid media you're doing or having the influencers themselves drive traffic in. And so I think first is thinking about what, what products, what, what video content do you need to optimize the page. And then what I really like to advise our, our clients is how do you think about tying in your product and your brand into seasonal editorial trends that are happening within your target segment on the social platform. And so consumer electronics, for example, gift guides are, are really popular. Influencers are typically creating series of videos on that theme. Smart home is another one that's, all, I think, been popular for a while now as consumers are trying to understand what does it mean to, you know, smart enable your home. How do I use an what? Alexa or other devices to control various things within my home. Finding those seasonal themes and trends that you can then integrate your brand message into, you can really see some increasingly positive um, over delivery from an organic reach standpoint, which then ultimately feeds into the traffic that you're driving into the channel. But the important thing is timing. One, um, you know, the, the time it takes to create the content. But the other thing is you have to understand that influencers act similarly to publishers in the sense where there is an editorial calendar and there is limited inventory. And so finding the influencer that aligns with your brand, getting into a piece of content that makes sense and would align to your, your broader plan is important. And the sooner you start to think about that and set that plan in place, the better results that you'll have, at, especially around holiday where some of those inventory issues happen a little bit sooner where, you know, influencers may only post video twice a week, which limits the amount of time that they can spend with advertisers. Uh, and so really it's planning ahead and making sure that you're thinking through upper funnel and lower funnel use cases for that content to get as much value and impact for holiday. And then I would just round it out by saying that um, right now is the time to start really digging into your analytics around uh, product page health and, and overall listing health. Um, if you wait much longer, it's fine, frankly going to be too late to take any action. Um, you want to take a look at your in-stock history and see if there's been any uh, instability uh, relative to out-of-stocks, particularly around promotional periods, uh, which you can use to inform your buyer uh, to increase uh, inventory levels ahead of the holidays. You want to take a look at your pricing trends to see how you're comparing versus what you would expect and versus competitors. Again, during holidays, it's almost too late to take a look at that because um, trying to uh, make adjustments in that regard can, can take some time to work collaboratively uh, with, with the retailer. Um, and there's some other aspects too, making sure you have your minimum number of ratings and reviews, your content keywords are in place, your search rank is where you need it to be. Um, ultimately, what we recommend coming into holiday because it is such a, a, a frantic period but also a sh relatively short period is creating a cluster or segment of ASINs um, or SKUs if it's not on Amazon um, that are going to be your focus area um, and isolating those um, within whatever analytics solution you use. For example, if in Clavis create a, a group within a dimension of those products so that you can focus in on only those um, and make sure that you've got the ones that are going to drive the most of your revenue, that you have those right, and you're working on that now uh, before the holiday peak uh, and spike starts to come. Great. Thank you, Danny, uh, Jessica, and Mark. Wonderful insights and, um, you know, great, great tips for actionable tips to, that you can put in action tomorrow, really. Uh, well, this does conclude uh, today's webinar. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Uh, we certainly are offering a, a good amount of Amazon-related uh, content as we round out the year. Uh, you can attend one of our live events in Seattle or London uh, in conjunction with sister companies One Click Retail and Plant Retail RNG, our one-day Amazon hackathons followed by one-to-one uh, -one Amazon consulting sessions. 
Uh, you can also download or access our newest white paper, Turning Amazon Traffic into Amazon Sales, where we certainly look at the, uh, the impact and the tactics behind driving both organic and paid traffic to your site, and then what you need to do to entice a purchase. Um, you can actually access that white paper by uh, completing our post-webinar uh, survey, uh, which will appear as you exit the screen. In addition, uh, Clappus Insight One-Click Retail and Plant R Retail R&G, um, along with, I'm sure, Mark and uh, uh, Content26 and Chendon Video will be attending uh, many of the biggest uh, fall trade shows around e-commerce, uh, ranging from the one-day Path to Purchase e-commerce symposium, uh, the My Digital Shelf Online Digital Grocery Summit uh, in Chicago, uh, and then rounding it out uh, at the back end of October uh, with Grocery Shop in Las Vegas. Uh, thank you all uh, once again. I hope to, to see you uh, or hear from you at an upcoming event or, or trade show. Uh, be on the lookout certainly for our uh, September webinar. We'll, we'll, we'll look at establishing your e-commerce program management. Uh, invitations for that webinar should be coming out within the next 10 days. Uh, and if you have more questions about our pro product offering, you can visit clevisinsight.com, oneclickretail.com, content26.com, or gen.video. Thank you all once again, and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.